Well, it's good to be back uh, again this morning. Pastor Dean last night sang with the group he belongs uh, to. They were out in uh, Rushmore singing in their uh, outdoor theater. <clears throat> I'm not sure what uh, <clears throat> the psalmist was experiencing when he wrote these words this morning. <clears throat> But we can kind of identify, since we've gone through um, record heat and drought season, something uh, life-draining must have been happening to him. But he comes to see God in his life. Truly, God is good to the upright, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant. I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for they have no pain. Their bodies are sound and sleek. <clears throat> they are not in trouble as others are. They are not plagued like other people. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes swell out with fatness. Their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice. Loftily, they threaten oppression. They set their mouths against heaven, and their tongues range over the earth. Therefore, the people turn and praise them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Such are the wicked, always at ease. They increase in riches. All in vain I have kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been plagued and am punished every morning. If I had said I will talk on in this way, I would have been untrue to the circle of your children. When I thought to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of God and perceived their end. Truly, you set them in slippery places. When my soul was embittered and I was picked in heart, I was stupid and ignorant. I was like a brute beast toward you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward, you will receive me with honor. Whom have I in heaven but you? There is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Indeed, those who are far off from you will perish. You put an end to those who are false to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I tell of your works. This is the word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> Bob Newhart um, did a routine filled with uh, cynical jokes about a man who gave uh, a farewell speech at his retirement dinner. The honoree was presented a watch for all of his years of service. And being an accountant, he figured the value of the watch uh, comes to about 28 cents a year. And then he recalled how the previous year, one of his co-workers, Mrs. Smith, absconded to Florida with $100,000. He reminisced about all those years of barely getting by on inadequate wages, saying things like, uh, if it hadn't been for petty cash, I never would have made it. And then he kind of um, paused reflectively and said, now, 
Mrs. Smith is in Florida with a hundred thou. And here I am <laughs> with this crummy watch. <laughs> Well, you have to either laugh or cry at that because it just hurts too much. And it raises the age-old question of why do evil people get rewarded? The psalmist poured out his personal struggle. As for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my, my feet had almost slipped. Because I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Well, you and I have had uh, those kind of doubt moments in our life, haven't we? You and I have kind of wondered about those things. We know jealousy. One uh, old time pastor told me that in his experience most of the heartaches in the church are caused by jealousy and the pastor is also participate in that sin then the uh, psalmist went on to describe how much we see the wicked get rewarded compared to the plight of the godly. And he laments, all in vain have I kept my heart pure. For all day long I am stricken and chastened every morning. Well, since we know that feeling very much ourselves, let's plunge headlong into an important question. What do you do when life hands you a crummy watch? The psalmist could put that into perspective only by going into the presence of God. He said, when I thought to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of the Lord. Well, how about it? When we gather in the presence of the Lord, is God good to us or not? Our response shapes how we cope with jealousy. So my prayer is that you and I and have our hearts transformed this morning the way the psalmist did centuries ago when he said, it is good for me to be near the Lord. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of your wonderful works. Yes, sometimes life will hand you a crummy watch. I told a, a friend about a woman who had just moved into town. She took care of her invalid husband and would love to come to church, but she couldn't drive. I asked uh, my friend if he would bring her to church with his, <clears throat> with his family. And he said he would. But the next Sunday when he went to her home, she recognized him as the local postmaster. This is really a small town. She'd had some kind of a problem with her mail delivery and just lambasted him about it and then refused to get in the car. <laughs> well, we can handle those injustices with dignity and strength as we remember that God loves us beyond measure and calls us to love other people too. Truly God is good to the upright, to those who are pure in heart. For me it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of your wonderful works. 
Now, if we can affirm that with our whole heart, it will not matter what other people get in life. If we cannot say that, it really won't matter what we get. Lord, as we concentrate on unfairness, we find no satisfaction, only a growing resentment. But looking towards you gives us a new perspective. You suffered wrongly, but you overcame that, and even told us to be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. You taught us to see that God is good. When we count our blessings, jealousy gives way to spiritual contentment and gratitude. It's good for us as your church to be near you. You have your work for us to do. We are your messengers of hope, your healers of broken bodies and spirits, your inspiration for the future. Bless those who need strength to go on through their struggle with ill health or limited circumstances or blurred vision. Open their eyes to your vision of things as you redeem the times to come. And now with joy we lift our hearts and voices in the prayer that you gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.